In this video, I will be speaking about three lessons on breathing that uh, we can derive for healthy individuals from patients uh, that uh, have uh, a coronavirus infection and the research that has been done on these cases. It is worth uh, reminding people that the way that coronavirus kills is by causing acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is not specific only to coronavirus. And it's basically an inflammatory state of the lungs. It's uh, an inflammation that takes place in uh, the entire lungs and more specifically in the alveoli where there is uh, fluid uh, accumulating. There is also proteins that are passed uh, inside the alveoli. And basically this inflammatory condition compromises the oxygenation of the blood. Patients that have ARDS are taken to intensive care unit where they are supported with uh, ventilators that pump oxygen inside uh, their lungs. Let's look at the first study I want to bring your attention to. It was done in 2000 and it was done in individuals that were suffering with ARDS and the problem that they were facing is that the ventilators were pumping oxygen very forcefully and extracting the carbon dioxide with a big enough force that was causing sear stress. Sear stress is the collapse of the cells, in this case the alveoli, causing higher levels of inflammation than what the patients had already. The solution to the problem was found when they reduce the tidal volume. So they reduce the amount of air that the patients were receiving and extracting air from their lungs. This caused an almost 9% improvement in mortality rates. This reduction of tidal volume was not only seen in this study, but in many other studies, they have tested this technique. Why is that important for health individuals? Those familiar with the Buteco method are already aware of the importance of light breathing, keeping the tidal volume low. There is uh, this uh, ep epidemic of people thinking that uh, heavy breathing such as is good breathing, they call it deep breathing. But um, the reality is that this is forceful, so it is uh, light breathing that uh, we want to be practicing in order to improve uh, breathing and our respiratory capacity. There are many breathing exercises that uh, facilitate that. I would almost argue that the majority of yogic breathing facilitates light breathing. But uh, it's not just yogic breathing techniques that uh, achieve that. In the description below, I will leave uh, um, a couple of links to exercises you can access that uh, facilitate light breathing and uh, you can download it for free as they are available on my SoundCloud uh, account. Moving on to the second study, which uh, was conducted in 2013. And it was again in uh, subjects that uh, had uh, ARDS. So in this study, they had two groups uh, one group was let in a supine position while the second group was put for 73 percent of their time in a pronated position and what they found is that those that were put in a pronated position were having 16 percent levels of mortality in comparison to 32.80 in the group that was all the time in a supine position the ones that spent time in pronated position we're also having uh, better chances of uh, staying alive uh, after the treatment. So how is that relevant uh, for healthy individuals? The reason why the ones that were in pronated position uh, had uh, a much better lung uh, function was uh, because of the negative pressure that uh, was reduced in their cases. So basically their lungs were restricted, uh, they could not expand as much as those that were in supine position and this facilitated better breathing. Now those of you that uh, practice yoga are very familiar with uh, holding positions uh, that restricts breathing. A lot of forward bends, a lot of twists, a lot of uh, uh, side flexion will put part uh, or the entire lungs under pressure. Practitioners that have been practicing for a while learn how to breathe comfortably in this position. This is really what was shown in the studies that uh, was uh, the benefit of people in a pronated position. 
the fact that they were forced to, to breathe with the lungs under pressure. This can be done by lying on your belly, this can be done through yoga, or in a more elegant way if you want, you can apply a belt around your rib cage, such as the Buteco belt. Finally, the nitric oxide, one of the three gases of the bloodstream, which is produced primarily in the paranasal sinuses, so we are having good levels of it only when we're breathing from the nose and avoid mouth breathing, has been shown to have protective effects from a viral infection. So this is a reminder for healthy individuals to breathe from the nose. Also, it is important to know that breath holds can increase the production of nitric oxide significantly. So again, this is something to consider, although we have to be quite careful when we are speaking about patients because in some of the cases of people infected with coronavirus, they can go into a hypoxic state. So in their cases, we have to be extra careful and not promote breathing techniques such as breath holds that potentially will drop their saturation of oxygen further. Now, a couple of days ago, I received a comment which was asking whether specific breathing techniques that will alter the blood pH can be protective for the infection. I had a look in the literature and I didn't see any evidence specific for the coronavirus. However, I found that it is quite common in many viral infections to be accompanied by a drop in pH in the area that surrounds the cells that are infected. However, this, in my opinion, is not enough evidence to practice breathing techniques that are making the blood more alkaline. So, as a quick reminder, the three lessons that healthy individuals can derive from the research done in coronavirus is that low tidal volume is something worth practicing, nitric oxide production can be protective potentially for infections, and finally, the biomechanics of breathing do matter and uh, learning how to breathe in different postures can facilitate good breathing long term. In the YouTube channel, there are plenty of other videos which uh, I invite you to explore on breathing theory, as well as another category of uh, videos where I'm reviewing breathing techniques. Also, if you want to deepen your knowledge into breathing, in the description below, there is a link of a five series video where I am describing a couple of breathing exercises that have a very potent effect into the nervous system, as well as two videos where I'm reviewing the basics of respiratory biochemistry. The link is in the description. And as always, I'm looking forward to receiving your comments in the comments area.